Imagine a common scenario in commercial aviation. An airline needs to connect two medium-sized cities, separated by more than 6,000 kilometers of ocean, operating in an airport 3,000 meters above altitude, where summer temperatures exceed 40 degrees Celsius. For most modern aircraft, this combination of factors would be almost impossible to overcome. But not for the legendary Boeing 757. Today, more than 550 units still cross the skies in different companies worldwide, some with more than 30 years of service, fulfilling routes that no other model can serve with the same efficiency. Delta Airlines alone maintains about 114 Boeing 757s, being the largest global operator and also the one most dependent on this jet. But here's the shock. With natural fleet wear, rising maintenance costs, increasingly rigid environmental pressures, and substitutes that don't reach the same performance level, Delta, as well as United and other operators, faces an inevitable crisis. How to replace such a versatile aircraft without losing range, profitability, and operational reliability? And the answer isn't in the aircraft you're thinking of. If you're also passionate about the world of aviation, consider subscribing to the channel and supporting our team. Launched in 1981, the Boeing 757 quickly established itself as the sports car of the skies, a designation that goes far beyond a simple nickname. And why this nickname? In the cockpit, the commander, in a demonstration flight with all seats filled by industry businessmen, warns that takeoff will be steeper than usual. And he wasn't kidding. The plane climbed like a missile, something never seen by all. The secret behind this legendary reputation lies in a unique combination of characteristics that decades after its last production in 2004, still hasn't been completely replicated by any other commercial aircraft. With capacity to transport about 200 to 240 passengers at a distance of 3,915 nautical miles, or 7,250 kilometers, the 757 occupied a very specific niche in the market, the medium to long haul segment in single aisle aircraft. The true magic of Boeing wasn't just in its gross numbers, but in the way it managed to deliver exceptional performance in extreme operational conditions. While other commercial aircraft needed to make concessions between capacity, range, and takeoff performance, the 757 offered the best of three worlds. Equipped with Pratt & Whitney PW2000 or Rolls-Royce RB211 engines provided an exceptional thrust-to-weight ratio, allowing impressive takeoffs even when fully loaded. This ability to operate in challenging airports transformed the 757 into the preferred choice for routes considered long and thin. Long-distance connections between cities that didn't generate sufficient demand to justify a wide body, but required more capacity and range than a conventional narrow body could offer. Think of routes like Boston Reykjavik, Newark Malaga in Spain, or Atlanta to Bogota. Connections that connected important markets, but with passenger volumes that made Boeing 767s or Airbus A330s economically unfeasible. What made this 757 truly special was its operational versatility. It can take off and land at airports with hot weather, high altitude, or both, and this was only possible due to the immense thrust of its engines. This allows it to operate in small airports like Midway, Orange County, Aspen, and other similar ones. This capability opened possibilities that other aircraft simply couldn't offer. The cabin configuration was also optimized for this specific niche, with a narrow fuselage that allowed operations at smaller airports, but with sufficient length to accommodate between 180 and 240 passengers depending on configuration, the 757 offered the ideal density for medium demand routes. But all this performance had a price. The 757 wasn't exactly known for its fuel efficiency. Its powerful engines and 80s design meant that Although it could go anywhere and take off from practically any runway, 
it consumed more fuel per passenger kilometer than modern standards would consider acceptable. It was the classic compromise of aeronautical engineering, performance versus efficiency. During its 23 years of production, more than 1,000 units of the 757 were produced between 81 and 2004. But as the new millennium advanced in pressures for energy efficiency and emission reduction intensified, Boeing began questioning whether there was still market for an aircraft that prioritized pure performance over operational economy. The decision to end production in 2004 seemed logical at the time. The aviation world was moving toward more efficient aircraft, and Boeing bet that the market would naturally divide between extended narrow bodies, like the future 737 MAX, and smaller wide bodies, like the 787. But this bet would prove problematic in a way that nobody could completely foresee. What Boeing didn't fully anticipate was that certain operations simply couldn't be adequately served by either of these two categories. There was something unique about that middle ground that the 757 occupied, not just in terms of capacity and range, but mainly in terms of operational performance. And this gap would become increasingly evident as the years passed and 757 fleets began aging. But what exactly makes an aircraft truly irreplaceable? And why has none of the modern models managed to completely fill the space left by the 757? The answer to this question began becoming clear when airlines, forced by the aging of their 757 fleets, began experimenting with the available successors in the market. What they discovered was a painful lesson about the compromises inherent to modern aeronautical design. The first natural candidate was the Airbus A321 XLR, the longest range version of the A321 family. With capacity to transport 206 to 244 passengers at a distance of 5,000 nautical miles or 7,250 kilometers, the A321 XLR offered more range than the 757, but with lower passenger capacity. More importantly still, Airbus emphasizes that the A321 LR consumes 15 to 30% less fuel per seat than the Boeing 757-200, making it an economically attractive option. However, when airlines began operating the A321 XLR on routes that previously used the 757, they quickly discovered its limitations. It doesn't have the 757's performance. At airports like Cusco, with 3,400 meters altitude, La Paz, 4,150 meters, or even sea level airports on particularly hot days, the A321 XLR needed to significantly reduce its fuel load or passengers to manage safe takeoff. The difference was particularly noticeable at airports with short runways combined with adverse conditions. While the 757 could take off from Orange County with its runway of only 1,700 meters, fully loaded even on hot days, the A321 XLR often needed to make operational compromises that directly affected the route's economics. On Boeing's side, the 737 MAX 10 also proved inadequate as a direct substitute. Although offering improved fuel efficiency and lower operational costs, it simply couldn't match either the range or load capacity of the 757 in adverse conditions. For routes like the popular U.S. East Coast Europe axis via secondary airports, the 737 MAX 10 fell short of expectations. Obviously, all this would be a setback, but certainly not as large when Boeing's delays in managing to certify the aircraft. The wide bodies, like the Boeing 787-8, offered adequate capacity and range, but represented too big a step in terms of operational costs and total capacity. This situation created what experts began calling the middle market gap a space between extended narrow bodies and small wide bodies that no modern aircraft could adequately fill. The market middle refers to aircraft with about 200 to 280 seats and range of 4,000 to 5,000 nautical miles or 7,408 to 9,260 kilometers, a definition that perfectly described the 757's niche. 
Boeing recognized this problem and in 2017 announced concepts for the NMA, New Mid-Market Airplane, which would be designed specifically to fill this gap. The project promised to combine modern efficiency with the operational versatility of the 757. Boeing intended to leverage existing technologies like composite materials for the NMA. The program would reshape the supply chain, indicating an ambitious approach to create a true 757 successor. However, the 737 MAX crisis, which erupted in 2018-2019, forced Boeing to reallocate resources and priorities. Boeing CEO at the time, Dave Calhoun, said that plans for a new mid-size airplane initially intended to replace the out-of-production 757 were cancelled in 2020, requiring a new approach. The decision left the field free for the Airbus A321 XLR to dominate the segment, even with its operational limitations. The NMA cancellation represented more than just a commercial decision. It was recognition that the gap left by the 757 would continue open for at least another decade. This cancellation pushed practically all middle market customers into Airbus's hands, observed an industry analyst. Meanwhile, the aviation world continued changing in ways that made the 757's niche even more relevant. The pandemic accelerated an already ongoing trend, passengers preferring direct flights between secondary cities instead of connections through large hubs. This behavior change created demand exactly for the type of route the 757 served best, medium demand, long distance point-to-point -point connections. Simultaneously, environmental pressures continued increasing. Aviation faced increasingly aggressive targets for emission reduction, making fuel efficiency an absolute priority. Any future 757 successor would need to not only match its operational performance, but do so with significantly lower fuel consumption. The question that remained was whether such a combination was technically possible. Advances in engines, composite materials, and aerodynamics of the last 20 years suggested yes, but would require a substantial commitment of resources and financial risk that after the MAX crisis, neither Boeing nor other manufacturers seemed willing to assume. Thus, while 757 fleets continued aging, with the newest aircraft having more than 20 years and many passing 30 years, the market gap remained open. Airlines were forced to make compromises, accept lower capacity and performance with the A321 XLR, use expensive wide bodies on marginal routes, or simply discontinue certain routes that depended on the unique capabilities of the 757. The central question is no longer whether the industry needs a successor for the Boeing 757, that's undeniable. The question is who will have the vision, resources, and courage to design and build the aircraft that the commercial aviation world clearly needs but doesn't yet exist. In a market increasingly focused on short-term efficiency, perhaps it's necessary for someone to have the audacity to think long-term again, exactly like those engineers who more than 40 years ago created that sports car of the skies that still today remains irreplaceable.